Oh. Hot chicken. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I think that piece was the hottest piece. But I don't know if that piece was the hottest piece. Oh, ah. I'm going to delete this one right after I post it. Hey, guys, I'm eating hot chicken. And I had a really long shoot day today making the Agent of Batman pitch video. So I got myself some hot chicken as like a congratulations. Ah. But it turns out the hot chicken is very hot. And I got just a, a little bit high. So the, the heat just keeps going. Hi, Tristan. Hi, Gory Productions. Hi, Boom Art Studios. Hi, Dr. Super White. Hi, everybody. Yeah, man, hot chicken, though. I thought I would just chat with you guys while I'm suffering through the hot chicken and then delete this video. I have a lot more of like my old, like good content coming, but I, it's been so hard during COVID and not having an editor. I did like a really cool video, I think on Jurassic World. And I did a video about Toy Story 4. That's pretty interesting. I did a video about the movie Cats and also about the film industry. Then I recorded my Agent of Batman pitch video today. Ah, heat, hot. The hot chicken's fucking with me. But I recorded that today. I think that's gonna be the next thing I release. My lips are burning too. And uh, and then, uh, ah, ooh, that's hot. Yeah, I, I've seen the trailer for The Boys season two. It looks a lot better than season one. Uh, my problem with The Boys has always been that, uh, to me, it's the simplest version of superhero satire. I'm not talking about the show, I'm talking about the comic. I think it's mean-spirited. I don't like mean-spirited satire generally. And I've always felt the boys, the comic was mean-spirited towards superheroes. Um, whereas the boys, the TV show is a little more generous to them. Um, my favorite Kubrick film is Eyes Wide Shut. I'm just gonna talk to me. I'm just gonna answer questions. I'm, I'm bad at, uh, the hot chicken's right here. I'm really bad at live streaming, guys. This is not my... This is not my brand, and this is not how I choose to further my presence in the online space, but uh, let's do it. Uh, what about Gremlins 2? Gremlins 2 is not mean-spirited. Gremlins 2 is brilliant and genius, and there's a whole section on it in my Jurassic, in my Jurassic World video. Ah, hot, hot. Oh, hi, Olivia. Nice to see you here in this format. Hello, Dennis. So here's a chicken. I don't know who I'll work with again. You know, it's going to it's gonna depend on who will work with me. I've been surprised at the people who have reached out and, and heartened. Um, but, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not trying to do any big collabs. Uh, favorite non-Big 2 comic? Preacher, the greatest ongoing comic book series of all time, other than Why the Last Man. Um, what I think about Scott Pilgrim, it's great. Uh, what's my release schedule looking like? September, but like... <laughs> you're going to get gang banged with content on YouTube in September. I'm also finishing a novel. I might publish a novel. I don't know. I, did any of you guys buy my play on Amazon? It's, it's pretty good. I'm really proud of it. Pre, is the preacher show good? Sort of. Uh, <laughs> hello, Mexico. I look like Jim Henson. Thank you so much to pass the times in these crazy times. I have been writing and working and creating things and tutoring through my company, Glass Planet, uh, spending a lot of time with my friends. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, we'll see, Olivia. Uh, I think you'll be surprised by who's not afraid. Um, yes, uh, anyone who wants to stage my play, thank you for reading my play. Anyone who wants to stage it, wants to read from it, Anything like that, I honestly would be so honored. That would be huge. Uh, you, you can buy it. It's called Polybius. It's on Amazon. Buy the paperback book. 
I'm pimping my merch. I'm a real YouTuber now. Okay, my lips have stopped burning a little bit. So I'm gonna go in to this. I'm gonna go into this. Uh, I'm scared. I'm scared to go into this. Uh, thoughts on anime or anime I like? Honestly, uh, Paranoia Agent has always been my dream live action adaptation. Like truly. Yeah, the beard does work, doesn't it? I always have this sort of like manic cult leader vibe. And I feel like now that I look like this, I actually, I got a Charles Manson shirt. Have you guys seen, does anyone here follow me on Instagram? Has anyone been following the way I've been dressing? Like I've totally revamped in like a hipster, like Burning Man guy. It's a real, it's a ridiculous rebrand. Seriously, Instagram up to my knees, 1985. You don't need to follow me, but like check out my Instagram. Cause first of all, my Instagram is tight, tight, tight. And second of all, the rebrand of like Max Landis from like, I'm a weird dorky guy in a tie to like, I have rainbow hair. I'm a weird crazy guy to like, I'm a blonde suave guy to like, I have short hair and I'm clean cut because I'm trying to fix my image to like crazy hippie guy. It's like, I, I, I look like this, uh, a different, uh, like the same actor playing different characters. Yeah, I have an Instagram. Do I regret my rainbow hair era? You know what? It's actually really hard to say because my life at that time, emotionally and mentally, I was like going through it. Uh, but the, I loved the rainbow hair. I loved how fuck you it was. I loved that. I loved that I had the confidence to do it. I don't think, you know, I'm not like a terrible looking guy, but with that rainbow hair, I really looked like not good. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Um, how bad was Double Down? The experience of watching it was wonderful. Thoughts on Freddy versus Jason? You wanna hear a story? I'll tell you a fucking story, okay? A couple years ago when I was like hotshot Hollywood Max Landis, I like went around trying to get the rights for Jason, Freddy, and Chucky. And the guy, I think his name was like Walter, but the guy in charge of the Freddy rights hated me personally and thought I was annoying. So he wouldn't meet with me, but I had this crazy, awesome, epic movie called Hellbound that I wanted to pitch them where you take all of the 80s horror icons and put them in a movie as the Avengers, as the main characters. I had the setup basically like Wizard of Oz, but going into hell and Freddy was Scarecrow, Jason was Tin Man, and of course Chucky was Cowardly Lion. And then Oz was uh, Pinhead, the Cenobite from Hellraiser. It, it really, it was really great. And it was a really fun thing. My pitch that kept like getting people on board was I always said, you're never gonna have a hundred million dollar opening weekend with a Jason movie. You're never gonna have a hundred million dollar opening weekend with a Freddy movie. And you're never gonna have even an $80 million weekend with Chucky. It's just not gonna happen. But if they're all on the same poster, it's a $100 million opening weekend. You do it as an adventure action movie with gore elements, get big creators like Del Toro involved, really have like a visually inventive epic movie featuring those characters because they're not scary anymore. We're in the Blumhouse era and we're also in the art horror era where the things that scare us, it, it isn't a doll or a, or even Annabelle doesn't move because modern audiences would be like, the doll's moving, that's dumb. You know, Chucky is almost like a Black Mirror movie. These, what the remake is, I wanted to do like an authentic thing about these characters because at the end of the day, Freddy, Freddy isn't so much, but Chucky is the protag of the Child's Play movies. Like his journey, Charles Lee Ray's journey to try to get a body is the driving storyline of all of those movies. So like, why not just sit this guy in the protag seat? Let us like him. Let us root for Freddy. Let us root for Jason. We already are rooting for them. Why not just commit? And it was so funny because I was really hot as a screenwriter at the time. And I got so, 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 so close on this. But that guy just hated me. That dude hated me. And so I never even got to pitch him. And I'm sure he, I'm sure he hated me for a good reason. I'm sure I was obnoxious to him as, at a party or something. I was really like, I was really like, uh, I, I was a real uh, snot-nosed punk asshole for uh, a number of years. You know, not 100% of the time, but 
sometimes and to the wrong people. Oh God, uh, so the pro tag, oh, people are actually asking about this pitch. Do you guys wanna hear sort of this pitch right now? I'll do like a bad version because I figure like, you know, I think I'm gonna delete this video after I'm done uploading. Uh, it's pretty dope, it's pretty dope. Everyone's asking who the antagonist is. I can, I can tell you dog, like I can, if you want me to do this pitch right now, I'll do it. Oh, you're all saying yes. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll tell you about the protagonist because I really love him. Um, his name is Clive. Clive is a black kid. He's 17. He's in the foster care system and he has a real aggression problem. Like, not good. He has like a rage problem. Like when he loses it, he loses it. And he's been bounced from foster care to foster care. He hasn't been able to find parents. Now he has this 16 year old drug addict girlfriend in the foster home. She's like the biggest problem in the foster home, but he's actually been on good behavior for like six months. And he's met this wonderful family. I think like young John Boyega, like attack the block John Boyega. Like that's who it is in my head. But this, 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 this family really loves him. And he's so excited because he's going to get adopted. He hasn't had an incident in a fucking year. The people at the foster home are like nervous about him because he's associating with, uh, let's call her Liv. But this girl Liv is like a problem. She's an addict. She's dangerous. She's borderline personality disorder. And But you know what? It looks like he's going to get out. So he goes to meet with the parents. They're fucking awesome. We love them. It's like Steve Zahn and Gina Robert or Gina Davis. Like it's, it's, they're fucking wonderful. He loves them. They love him. He, they have a job for him at their store. You know, our dude Clive, he's like, this is my moment. The thing is on the night that he is supposed to be picked up by them, their grandmother has a, their mother, Steve Zahn's mom has a medical emergency. So the adoption has to wait a week, but that bed at the foster home is actually being filled that night which means Clive, our main character, is getting bounced from his foster home to a local parent home who like take foster kids in. So he's like, oh, fuck, okay. So he has to go stay with total strangers. He gets sent to this nice house on a nice street. And you know what? These people are nice. These people seem cool. Let's call them the Smiths. Like they, they seem like really nice and they're clearly like, we're sorry you have to be here. And then fucking Liv, his drug addict girlfriend, comes sneaking in the window. And she's like, you're gonna leave me? And he's like, no, I'm getting adopted. You can't sneak, does this mean you broke out? They get caught by Mr. Smith. They're brought downstairs. Mr. Smith's like, what are we gonna do? Do we call the place? Clive is like, please, I'll do anything. I'll do anything, I'll do anything, I'll do anything. Please, 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 please. Please, please, please don't call the place because then I won't get adopted by Steve Zahn and Gina Davis. Like, please, please, please. And they, Mr. Smith goes, okay, okay, okay. I see what's happening. Um, sure, I'll, I'll do it if you can solve this puzzle. And he takes out a cube that looks very familiar. That's the puzzle box from Hellraiser. And he hands it to Clive. And Liv is sitting there and she goes, are you serious? What is this, some sort of sick Saw movie? You're making him solve a Rubik's Cube or you're gonna sabotage his adoption? Clive is like, yo, Liv, shut the fuck up. You have sabotaged my adoption. I am going to solve this Rubik's Cube. Click. If you've seen Hellraiser, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, allow me to describe an ornate cube that uh, moves and twists and seems sinister, but it can't really be described how. What does this cube mean? You'll see later in the pitch. So Mr. Smith takes back the cube and he goes, interesting. And Clive goes, yeah, it was easy. Mr. Smith goes, okay. And he serves Clive and Liv dinner. He says, Liv, you can leave. Miss Smith bids Liv out. Liv is like, on coke and like crazy. So she kind of sneaks back around the house and she's like, no, no, those people were weird. There's something weird going on. They're not weird, by the way. They seem perfectly nice to anyone who hasn't seen a Hellraiser movie. So <laughs> uh, Clive is sitting there and 
he he's at the dinner table. He's finished. He starts to get dizzier, 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 and then goes crashing to the ground. The ambulance comes to pick him up, but Liv, seeing what's happening, follows. The parents are like, oh, I fucked up my pitch because I've never pitched this before. Fuck. I fucking fucked up my pitch. Are you guys enjoying this? Can I keep going? I, is this, I, I'm just having fun sort of indulging myself on this. Because we're about to like go fucking nuts hard into this pitch right now. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Keep going. Thank you, Luca Dormo. Okay. So I fucked up my pitch. So what happens is he collapses at the dinner table and Mr. and Mrs. Smith start to bring him upstairs. But Liv sees what happens because she's on coke and paranoid and she calls 911. So an ambulance comes, gets Clive. Clive's in a fucking coma. He's vomiting on himself. He's shaking. They take him and the ambulance leaves and we pass the sign, Elm Street. In the hospital, the Smiths isolate Clive and they keep trying to get into the room, but he's in a coma and can't wake up. Or at least his physical body can't. Deep inside the dreamscape, Clive awakens on Elm Street. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Freddy Krueger attacks and tortures and kills Clive. But Clive doesn't die. Freddy again tries to kill Clive, slashing him apart. The wounds are horrific. The pain is intense. But Clive simply heals. The third time Freddy attacks, Clive fucking loses it. This kid has had a rage problem for a long time. He attacks and pummels Freddy beating the shit out of him and eventually stabbing him with his own claws. Freddy barely manages to overpower Clive and rips his face off. And his face grows back. Freddy is like, what the fuck is happening? Clive is like, where am I? What's going on? Out in the hospital, more and more of the Smiths' friends from Elm Street are arriving. Nice white folks from a good neighborhood. Interesting. Interesting. Liv has broken into the hospital. She's convinced a cult is trying to kill her boyfriend. That doesn't go over well with the hospital guards, but she kicks one in the balls and gets away. By the way, I should mention at this point that despite Liv being in a place where she's coming down from cocaine, her boyfriend has been kidnapped by a cult. She is correct. She is exactly correct about what is happening. Meanwhile, in the dreamscape, Freddy, after repeatedly trying to kill Clive, has it revealed to him that Clive, on his body, has the puzzle box he solved. Freddy doesn't know what it is. However, when Freddy touches it briefly, his burns heal, and Freddy has a shock as he's turned into Fred Krueger. Just for a moment, and then the claws come back out and the burns go back on. Freddy, startled, says he feels like he remembered something from his life. Clive is like, who the fuck are you? You're a murderer in dreams? And that's the point when Freddy realizes he doesn't know. For the last nearly 50 years, Freddy Krueger has been killing teens in their sleep. But he doesn't know how, and he doesn't know why, and when they're not dreaming, He's not conscious. In fact, the fact that he couldn't kill Clive has meant that this is the longest contiguous period of consciousness he has had since his death, which is about three hours. Usually Freddy has 15 minute blips in and out of dreams. And no one has asked him, who are you and why are you here? Clive is like, who are you? What are you and why are you here? When Freddy realizes he doesn't know, he wants to touch the cube again. But now Clive's like, no, 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 no. You can touch the cube again if you get me out of this place. Freddy's like, I don't know how to get you out of this place. This is your, I don't know what this place is. Not dialogue we from, I'd want like a really good actor for Freddy. It couldn't be England, he's too old, but someone really, really cool, you know, like who could do the switch from like the j sexual jokes and being a prick to being like really freaked out because the fun of this part of the movie is you watch Freddy try to untangle the lore of Freddy Krueger and he can't. So 
here we go. Our dude gets the cube, spins it, and then Freddy, who wants to touch it, tries to touch it, and it tears open the world, revealing an endless, fiery drop beneath them. But then this sort of glimmering Lovecraftian mist that goes off that way. Clive is like, bye, I'm going that way. Freddy is like, hey, kid, 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 wait. You're telling me you can get me out of here? And Clive is like, I don't fucking know you creepy old white man. I like really, I really am not interested in your bullshit, okay? Freddy's like, no, 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 I can help you. I can help you. I know all about hell. I've been sent to hell before. If that's a way out, you have to take me. He doesn't do it so desperately. I'm just a bad actor. It's more like, if that's a way out, you have to take me. You know, good dialogue. I'm good at dialogue. Sometimes when I write, just trust, I would like do okay at the dialogue. So they go into the mist. Meanwhile, in the hospital, the cult is like in force and they are starting to sort of like block off the lowest floor. So all the doctors and nurses in the hospital are going around going, sir, you're not supposed to, sir. A lot of little incidences like that, except for there's more and more of them. And Liv is like, these people are a cult. She's right, but it doesn't go over well with the hospital guard, especially since she already kicked him in the nuts. And she's like, you need to lock down the hospital before it gets any worse. They're trying to kill my boyfriend. The dude cuffs her. And that's when something appears behind him. A shape of a man. You might recognize him by his mask. Michael Myers slits the guard's throat. Liv is cuffed to a thing. She's like, ah! Michael Myers goes to kill her. She manages to break the thing and stabs Michael Myers through the chest. He falls backwards, slashing at her. Liv runs out into the hospital, but the hospital is on lockdown. That's right. This is no longer an epic adventure movie through hell. It's also a classic 80s slasher movie a la Halloween 2 set in a hospital starring Michael Myers. I give gifts to you because I love you. Out of the mist in hell comes Clive and Freddy. Except for as they exit, they realize... They're not in hell. They're in some sort of Stygian Midgard territory, a space between spaces, a uh, bardo, if you will. Sounds like there's a party going on down that way. So they head down that way and see a sign that says, welcome to Camp Crystal Lake, a moonlit party with naked models, teenagers everywhere. It is an orgy. They're smoking weed. They're getting drunk. The kids are nowhere in sight. Oh, wait, there's a kid. He's hanging from a tree. There's a kid. He's impaled to a door. As they walk in, Freddie and Clive see every single dead body from every Friday the 13th at Crystal Lake. They walk through the crime scenes as though it happened moments ago, but there's still just this big party going on. The counselors act like Freddie, even though he's... Freddy Krueger is a totally normal guy. They're like, hey, sexy, come party. Do you like smoking weed? Freddy is like, something's wrong with this place. I've been here before. I've been here before. We got to get out of here. Jason is like, or no, Jason, spoilers as if, yeah, obviously. Are, are, we, having, uh, are we having fun? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, by the way, if, if you didn't understand how Michael Myers appeared from nowhere, maybe you should ask about those black thorn tattoos on the wrists of the parents from Elm Street. That's right. Halloween 4. Paul Rudd. Halloween 5. Curse of Michael Myers. I'm doing the cult thing. They never paid it off in the Halloween movie, so we're paying it off here. And we're paying it off seamlessly for people who've never seen the terrible Halloween sequels by introducing this cult as the cult that controls not only Michael Myers, but also Freddy Krueger. We'll get into that in a second because we're linking the entire mythology seamlessly with pieces that were already there. We're not rebooting anything. Here we go. <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake's a popping party, but Clive sees out in the water, way, way, way far, far out there, drowning is a little boy. He's just drowning. He drowns for hours on end as the counselor's party. He's just stuck there, dying. 
Clive gets sort of drawn into the partying. It's like one of those old scenes from like, you know, Greek mythology where the women, you know, seduce the men by looking at them, boo, 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 you know, like, oh, I guess I do want to party. Freddie is like, this is maybe, I was wrong about Camp Crystal Lake. Like, this is sick. He puts on a Camp Crystal Lake t-shirt, of course, so we can sell merch of Freddie in the Camp Crystal Lake t-shirt, be serious. And he puts on the baseball cap. He's like, kid, come on, let's just party, why not? Clive is like, no, this is wrong. There's that boy drowning. Clive runs, jumps off the dock, swims deeper and deeper and deeper into the lake, comes to the boy. He's deformed and misshapen. The boy's screaming. He wraps his arms around. He wraps his arms around around Clive. Clive gets pull, pulls the boy back into shore. Meanwhile, Freddie's partying with the counselors, but all the counselors stop partying. In fact, they're all now staring at Freddy and their faces seem long and distended. They're all standing on the shore as our hero Clive pulls young Jason Voorhees, choking, choking. Clive goes, fuck this shit, and gives him CPR. Being a lifeguard was one of the things he had to do for his community service. He saves Jason before he drowns. Jason sits up shaking. Freddy sees Jason and goes, Oh, then turns out of the counselors. He's not scared anymore. He goes, wow, you're all fucked now. Goes sting like that. And then behind him, this little kid hulks into eight foot tall Jason Voorhees. Machete, hockey mask, let's go. Freddy and Jason versus the demonic counselors. It's fucking awesome. Except for midway through the fight, one of the counselors reaches and touches the cube that Clive is trying to keep away. By touching the cube, instantaneously, white skin, metal bolts, they become a Cenobite. They wipe out all the counselors, but then it's Clive versus the Cenobite. And this thing has fucking spawn chains, CGI chains whipping all over the place, practical chains hitting stuntmen, Jason and Freddy fucking fighting like they're in a fucking Marvel movie. This is where they need to be. This is where the characters deserve to be. They don't deserve to be in shitty remakes. Sorry. I'm passionate with that hot chicken, that beer, and that weed. I'm passionate about this. Okay, we ready? Back in the hospital, Liv tries to call the police and gets through and calls them. And guess what? There have already been multiple police calls from the hospital. This cult is not doing this smoothly, but the hospital's quarantine lockdown procedures are initiated. The police can't get in even though they're surrounding the building. Liv realizes if she's going to say, if someone's going to save Clive, she's going to have to do it herself. She still has this fucking bar cuffed to her. So she wraps the chain around her arm, sticks the bar in there, locks it off. Freddie, Clive, and Jason defeat the Cenobite. Jason has now entered the party and he's basically Chewbacca. Like, that's literally the character. The best thing about Jason is that he can go into big mode, but most of the time the character is in little boy camp mode. Because I always found that in, that version of Jason interesting. I never really felt like we explored it. I was always really, really curious to know what he was like. So now he's hanging with the gang, but Freddy and Jason are just at each other's throats, even though Jason is just sort of like, hmm, hmm. You know, like that. But Freddie will say something and Jason will go, mm, like that. And Freddie will go, don't condescend to me. You know, it's like that. It's like the classic, the classic vibe of that type of pairing. So out they go, but the Cenobite is still pursuing them. They use the cube, the lament configuration to tear another hole in reality and escape through that. The Cenobite can't be killed by Freddy and Jason. No matter how many times they try to kill it, this thing just keeps coming. And what it does to you isn't kill you. You can't die in hell. What it does to you is wrap you in chains and tries to take you away. Where is it taking you? What do the Cenobites want to do to you? Well, we'll find out soon. Hang on. Jesus, come on. So through the mists again, this time the Cenobite derails them. They end up in an endless parking lot. In the parking lot for the first time, Freddie basically says, explains what's happening to Jason. 
This kid has a box that can get us out of hell. Little Jason is like, I'm not in hell. Yes, you are, kid. No, what did I do wrong? You killed about 400 people. I don't think I would do that. Yeah, but you did, though. Were they all bad people? No, they were children. Are you crying? So <laughs> Freddie and Jason have a uh, difficult relationship. Uh, are, we, are we still enjoying this? <laughs> There's a, I'm far enough into it that I want to like finish it. I want to like do the whole thing. I need validation, guys, you know? It's not like I'm a beloved figure. <laughs> Sometimes a bitch just needs to be validated. Hold on. Wow, this, this camera is really garbage. That piece of, oh, I made it worse. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys know that I'm deleting this. I, I, this isn't going to stay up. So the Max Landis Hellbound pitch is a you guys exclusive. Do people still do that? Do people still? I always thought it was interesting when I would see like fanboy channels pitching like, here's my pitch for the sequel. Because on some level, that's exactly what I do. I only like got to the like <laughs> higher level. <laughs> you know, like, but, uh, oh, I'm just mumbling to myself. Let's get back into, like, story mode. I'm so sorry that I fucked up the camera. Okay, that chicken's pretty hot. Okay, here we go. At the edge of the parking lot is a steel gate. Freddy is like, getting out of hell can't be this easy, right? Because like, I don't know, but guarding the gate is an old man. The old man stares at Clive. Clive stares at the old man. This is the old man Clive beat up three years ago when he was 14. He was a security guard at a mall. Now he's a guard in hell. Clive is like, will you let us through? The old man is like, you're trying to leave? Clive, do you think you're here by mistake? Do you think those people up there could send someone to hell? Do you think they're that powerful? Or do you think they just rushed you along to where you was already going? I died in my sleep of a stroke. They said it was natural, but the devil told me it was because of that hit you gave to my head. Clive is like, ha, ah, but I'm the protagonist of this movie. So can I please leave hell? No, Clive is like, Clive. So in the moment that you would think that he's gonna be like, I'm so sorry, he goes, Hey, fuck you, old man. You think you're in hell by accident? Are you a fool me? What the fuck did you do? I just fucking punched you. What the fuck did you do? You had a whole life to live and you still ended up in hell. Fuck you, old man. And Clive beats the shit out of the guard again. He's not your normal protagonist. I want to have fun with him. You know, I want to like, whoa, damn. Jason and Freddie are like, fuck. That was really intense. So... So I I never need I need to not look at the chat because I get distracted. So they bust through the gate. They're gonna leave hell, and they realize they haven't left hell. At the end of this parking lot was a factory. It's the good guy doll factory from Child's Play too. And from inside, they can hear someone screaming, "Help! Help me! Help!" Freddie, Jason, and Chucky. Head, realize the only way 
through is through the factory. It extends in blah, 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 blah. it extends infinitely in either direction. So they have to fucking go directly through the front doors. Freddie's like, listen, we can't stop and help people everywhere we go. This isn't a rescue mission. We need to get out of here before another one of those Cenobite things finds us. Jason is like, Ooh, mm, someone want help. Clive is like, look, we need all the help we can get. If someone doesn't want to be here, we're on their side. Get it straight. They go into the good guy doll factory and everywhere are humans with doll eyes that are assembling Chucky dolls. They're assembling good guy dolls, left, right, left, right, left, right. And they're assembling every version from every version of Child's Play. So every single different model of the doll is represented on the assembly line. Dangling above everything is our Chucky design, which is going to be really close to the one in Child's Play 2, uh, which is the best one. The bride design is great, but like Child's Play 2 is the one that rides the line between being really expressive and being really horrifying to look at. So Chucky's up there. Help me! Help me! Clive is like, they got a little kid up there. Freddy's like, that's not a kid. It's one of these dolls. Jason's like, mm, he's small. You need help. Clive's like, let's fucking get him down. Freddy's like, please, don't. He's clearly evil. This is a hell for him. Don't be a fucking fool. Clive is like, no, uh, excuse me. I am a fucking fool. Fuck you. I'm going to get the doll down. Incredible three-tiered action sequence where Jason, Freddy, and have to fight all these doll people. Fucking awesome. And again, a new Cenobite made of Chucky dolls. Again, I'm thinking about the merchandise here, people. I'm thinking about the toys. <laughs> I want to sell people the Chucky ball statue, Chucky Cenobite statuette. We haven't gotten to the most merchandisable sellout Ready Player One moment of this pitch yet, by the way. that You'll know that when it comes. Okay, so here we go. I'm excited. Okay, so here we go. So Clive manages to get Chucky down. Chucky is like, my name is Charles Lee Bray. I was falsely accused of the murder of seven people. And then I was trapped in the body of a doll. Freddy is like, if you're falsely accused, what are you doing here? Chucky is like, you guys seem like nice people. Please. I'm an innocent soul. Voodoo was done to me by a, you know, a black guy. Clive is like, I'm black. Chucky's like, no, you know how it is. Clive's like, what's that mean? Chucky's like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it is. Just please help. Jason, Freddy's like, yo, this guy's racist. <laughs> like, Chucky is like, just please, please, please help me, please. So they take Chucky. Chucky says, the thing is, I've been dead. Oh, this is an important part of the pitch. I forgot. This is how Chucky makes his case after he's a dumb racist idiot. He goes, he goes, I, he's kind of like uh, DeVito from Always Sunny is sort of how I pictured Chucky. D nice Chucky. Chucky pretending to be nice is like he's bad at it. So he's like, please, kid, I know how to get out of here. I know how to get out of hell. I know voodoo magic. I can get you to the deeper layer. And they're like, why didn't you get yourself to the deeper layer? He's like, you think I haven't tried that? You think I ended up in the factory on accident? No, man, I've been back and forth to the real world many, many times, and I can smell it on this guy, too, the big mentally different guy. Is that, he's mentally different? Jason's like, fuck you. Chucky's like, fuck you. I love this movie. Uh, so <laughs> I'm having so much fun. I'm so happy that, th thank you for my Brad DeReef impression. I was doing my best. Uh, okay, bright, oh my God. So glad people like Bright. Okay, so uh, I want to get into this, people. Let's 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 say let, let's let's roll right through. Okay, so Chucky is like, I can get you to the deeper level. Oh, what's it say? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna repost a lot of the scripts I've been posting on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna rep I'm gonna try to make one. Okay, so Chucky. Okay, so Chucky's like, I can get you to the lower level of hell where they judge people. Every time I've tried to go, they catch me and send me back up. And they're like, who catches you? Who runs hell? He's like, devils, demons, you know, the fucking things, the fucking red guys, they're monsters. It's all fire down there. He's like, 
Really? That's what hell is? Freddy is like, one time worms came out of me. Chucky's like, yeah, shit like that. Freddy, Freddy is like, I don't know what the worms meant. And Jason kind of goes, oh, I, I turned into a worm. Clive goes, you turned into a worm. And Freddy goes, ignore him, please. Chucky's like, thank you. See, he's different. By the way, uh, so many of these are like deep cut in jokes for big fans of this, of these series. Like Jason did turn into a worm. <laughs> That's an actual thing that happened in the Friday the 13th movies. Okay, sorry. Uh, but it would be like a throwaway joke in this movie. And if you get it, you get it. And if not, it's just Jason going, I turned into a worm and it's cute. So like, there would be a lot of that in the dialogue. You know, I, I'm not gonna do like outright fan service cause I wanna fold it in. I always like to fold in. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I got real sidetracked. Here we go. Uh, Anna, Hellraiser, hell is not about devils, is it? That's funny. What did I say about the Wizard of Oz? Anyway, so here we go. So Chucky goes, Are they Dembala? Give me the power I beg of you, and brings them a level lower into hell. And it's like Greek hell. It's fire and demons and all of the things, all the things we've never really seen in a movie, all the shit from Doom. Like big fancy hell. Wow. And they just walk right in. All around them are undead people. It's basically like that scene in Hellboy 2, where like the market, like we're now in a full on fantasy movie in hell. Meanwhile, in the hospital, our homegirl watches as our homegirl Liv uh, watches White. I don't know why I called her our homegirl, just because I like her. I was just being affectionate to my character. She watches as Michael Myers kills his way through the entire hospital. And that's when she realizes something. Everyone here from researching them. They're all like couples in their 50s and 60s. They were all parents at one time of a child who died mysteriously or violently while sleeping. What? Liv manages to get to the roof and a few of the other foster kids, her like it, stranger things group, meet up with her because they broke in. They brought knives. They brought a gun. These are not the kids from Stranger Things. They're gonna fuck up these fucking cultists. <laughs> they go into the hospital. In hell, we get the payoff to the storyline that we have just been introduced to. As Freddy, Jason, and Chucky have to go through with Clive this area where you are judged. Enter and begin an incredible sequence uh, where we see Clive beat up the old man. We see Chucky kill so many people. We see Jason murder his way through legion upon legion of teenager. And then it gets to Freddy. And an interesting thing happens. So I'm gonna try this and, uh, okay, and see if I can do it. So basically we watch this movie of Freddy's life with Freddy and Clive. We see Freddy, young boy, being raised in the trailer park. His mother's abusive. He tortures cats. He's a little sociopath. His mother rubs his face in a dead cat. And then we see him, teenager, creepy. Never has any friends, lonely and weird. You know, Jackie Earl Haley, Freddy, creepy. He gets a job at the school. He's a janitor at a little school on Elm Street. And he actually really gets along with the kids. He makes them laugh. He starts to have a flirtation with a teacher. His life is kind of like coming together. Missing poster. One of the little kids at Elm Street is missing. The police talk to Freddy Krueger. Police talk to the teacher. The school year continues. Freddy attends the little girl's funeral. He builds this glove. But it's just a glove he uses to clean the inside of the boilers. But more and more, 
missing posters are coming up. The police talk to Freddy again. And again. More funerals. Freddy, one day, goes to visit one of the little kids. Goes up to their bedroom. Here's something. He comes in. There's blood on the floor. He goes into the bathroom and he sees her father slitting her throat with the Freddy gloves. We're where we know in Freddy's origin story. He's running covered in sweat, chased by the parents of Elm Street, the real killers of the children of Elm Street. He's trapped in the boiler room. He remembers his good times with the teacher. All the faces of the missing kids flashing in front of him as the parents throw in a Molotov and light the boiler room on fire. Freddy frantically tries to use the glove to break the window but can't and burns alive. Clive turns to Freddy. Oh my God, man. You were innocent. They framed you to summon a demon. Freddy is like, no, this is impossible. This doesn't matter. Clive goes, you weren't in hell. You were in the dreamscape. I was the one that brought you to hell. Freddy is like, no, 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 no. Fre Clive is like, you've been murdering for them. You're not a serial killer. You're a hitman. They brainwash you. Freddy is like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> Are you guys still enjoying? <laughs> the real killer this whole time has been the parents on Elm Street. They summon Freddy to sacrifice their children for great material wealth on earth. They are also the Blackthorn cult, the people who created Michael Myers. They are the sat satanic unifying principle of this universe. Pretty cool. I mean, I, I mean, I like it. Okay. Let's hop on our Spielberg shit. Okay. They arrive in, st in, I think it's called the city of Dis, which is the main city in hell where the devil sits on a flaming throne. Freddy is like, Chucky is like, I've never been this far in. It's kind of corny, isn't it? Clive is like, it's hell, man. What's it, corny? You're that jaded? Just because you lied about being a serial killer in a doll's body. Excuse me, I am a, a man in a doll's body. Don't reduce me to a serial killer. Man, technically in hell, you're not in a doll's body. You are a doll. So technically you are a toy. So shut the fuck up, you lying toy. Chucky's like, kid, I don't like you. And if your body's still alive up there in the coma, when we get out of here, I'm going right in. Chucky's going to be a bro. I said it once before and I'll say it again. Clive goes, I'd like to see you try, you little fucking doll. I'll fucking beat your ass right now. And Chucky's like beating, <laughs> Clive's just beating Chucky's ass. Just like wailing on him. And Chucky can't do shit. He's a fucking doll. <laughs> Clive gets pulled off by Freddy and Freddy's like, we still need him. Yes, Clive is Southern. Uh, he's from Louisiana. But so I'm doing his voice wrong because I'm trying to do, I guess I did like a half ass black guy voice. But he's not. He's not my impression of him. He's whatever brilliant actor we got. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, he's Rocket. Chucky's the Rocket of it. Okay, here we go. So they realize that there's some sort of ball going on in hell where everyone is gathering in the main city on hell. But banners have unfurled around the city featuring Freddy, Jason, and Chucky and Clive as like wanted posters. It's a total fantasy movie. It's almost like a Star Wars movie. Okay, back in the hospital, our girl, Liv, she fucking cuts her way through three of the cultists and manages to get uh, fucking 
get Clive in the bed he's in out of the room. So now they're pushing around a gurney with an unconscious guy in it in a hospital filled with panicking patients, trigger happy police officers, cult members, and Michael Myers. So just imagine if I don't lean into that part of the plot a lot in the next four minutes or so, that that is what's happening in cutaways in the movie. And yes, Freddie has the glove. Uh, he also, once he's in hell, can do a sort of a JRPG type deal where he uh, can go like that and make the glove like swords. So he has like, there. It's, it's a fantasy film, ideally. And, you know, the marketing... The marketing of it and everything would lean into that. You know, you'd have, I, I wanted the poster uh, to be the kid, Clive, sitting on like a throne made of bones, and then Chucky sitting on his lap uh, like like this and uh, in a jester hat, and uh, Freddy sort of in like Freddy colored robes whispering in his ear, kind of like Varys or like Peter Baelish, and then behind the throne, like the Hound or the Mountain, Jason, like that with like a really cool stylized hockey mask and below it, it just says, go to hell. I mean, like there's no way that movie isn't a hit. It could suck. They could do like a bad job and everyone would still be like, well, this looks cool. Especially after this next part, uh, which would be uh, complicated, but uh, we'll see. You know, a director would have butchered this, right? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. I know. <laughs> Clive becomes aware that the reason there's this big congregation of demons gathering at this massive ballroom in the center of the city of Dis is because a demonic invasion of Earth is about to occur. Clive realizes it's his body that's going to be sacrificed to start the demonic invasion. It must have something to do with this cube, but what does it mean? The devils here in hell don't look like the thing that attacked them at Crystal Lake. All those chains and metal. What does it mean? Clive found it strangely beautiful. Hypnotic even. He plays with the cube again, but he can't get it to open like it did before doesn't understand. Freddy is like still fucked up from finding out he's wrongfully accused, except for he has like murdered hundreds of people. Like, like, so he's having a whole, he's on one. Chucky is like on outs with the group, but is there by obligation because he doesn't want to separate from them and get caught. And Jason just is trying to like keep everyone together and keeps patting Freddy. And he goes, you were a nice man. You know, like, and for you, shut the fuck up. You know, like, he hates it. So Clive is like, we have to get inside that ball. So they start to, like, look for people they can assume the identity of. Freddie sees someone going in and has Jason grab Warwick Davis, the leprechaun from the leprechaun movies, out of the crowd, cut his head off. Of course, that doesn't permanently kill him, but he then throws the head and the body off a cliff and takes his clothes. Chucky is now dressed as the leprechaun from Leprechaun. Jason, looking into the crowd, Freddy goes, that guy, it's Leatherface. Jason gets behind Leatherface. Boom, claw to the face. Clive takes out his legs. Jason fucking cuts him in half. Jason throws the halves off the cliff. It's a psych gag we do three times, you know, roll of three. So, so he throws Leatherface off the cliff. You now have Jason dressed as Weatherface. So it just, again, these are toys and skins for the video game and possible Halloween costumes, Jason as Leatherface. And then finally, Clive and Freddy are looking for someone and they see like a flock of screams of the killer from Scream. There's just a flock of them. So both of them put attack those guys and put on their costumes. So there's two Scream ghosts, Leather Leatherface and the Leprechaun, and they head into the ball in hell. Yeah, it's this movie's like silly and fun. Um, and also like, uh, that's actually, you could have Jason go, ew, when he puts the flesh face on. That's really a good gag. That's really funny. Well, then you, it would just be like a quick cut, like almost a, uh, like a, 
a Lord Miller style quick cut of Chucky and Jason trying to hold, or Chucky and Freddie trying to hold Jason still. And Clive going, we're just going to put this over your face. And Jason going, Mo, like that. <laughs> and then they put the leather face on him. And Jason goes, ooh, it's a good idea. Okay. In the ball in hell, we're in the ready player one zone. Samara, Candyman, Pumpkinhead Demon, everyone, the pump, the Puppet Master Puppets, the Driller Killer, Maniac Cop, the Toxic Avenger, everybody, every 80s iconic monster who is not an alien is up in this shit. This scene is not in any of the trailers. Maybe you see a glimpse of it and we hide the fact that this happens in the movie at all. So when you witness this as you're watching the movie, if you didn't read the spoilers, you'll be like this. How did they get the rights to all these characters? Except for most of those rights are cheap as shit and would be really happy to be involved in a project this big. It's so incredible we got the right. Anyway, so it's everyone. It's every iconic bad guy. It's the bad guys from Nightbreed. It's the vampires from Near Dark. It's everyone. It's the werewolf from American Werewolf is in there. You know, it's every single monster. And like, it's one of those posters you buy at a convention with all the monsters on it. It's that. Clive as he goes in, realizes that even though there's like a big, like sort of legend Tim Curry Satan sitting on a throne, Clive is like, this is bullshit, man. Something's weird about this. Freddie is like, yeah, I'm getting that too. By the way, Scream costume, Freddy glove, buy the figure. Where does Halloween costume? What? It's so cool. Anyway, so they sneak in and everybody is like meeting each other. It's totally crazy. Of course, the shocker is there. Who else is there? Everyone's there. Uh, the Dust Till Dawn vampires, yes. The villains from Scanners, yes. This is, yes. Candyman, yes, of course. How could he not be? You know who else is there? The Bye Bye Man. The Bye Bye Man is there. No big deal. We got the Bye Bye Man. Like, I want everybody. I want it to be like the whole squad. Yeah, Wishmaster is there. No Terminator. I'm filming this on a potato because it's all I have left. Christine is there. That would be fucking sick. Gotta have Christine. Jeepers Creepers is definitely there. The Collector, why not? The Babadook. Well, not really, because the Babadook isn't real. I'm chewing. I'm sorry. The Tall Man from Phantasm with the ball. Pee Pee Poo Poo Man from My Bad Dream. I missed her gently too. It was fun. Okay. I'm so close to finishing this. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to power through and then I'm going to bail out and I'm going to delete this video. <laughs> okay. Uh, I forgot where I was. We're about the ball in hell. Oh, and Clive called bullshit on the ball. He sneaks up behind the throne and sees that on the back of the devil's throne, there is a giant, lattice symbol it's all these geometric symbols and clive realizes those are the same ones on the fucking cube clive's like this is how they sacrificed me he goes out in front of the devil in front of all the monsters of hell he tips over this giant fucking thing of fire and he goes oh you listen to me you're being fooled this is not the devil. I love Clive so much. And Freddie is like, uh, Chucky is like, I'm not with him. Jason is like, that's not the devil. Why? I can't believe it. This is not the devil. This is a fake. The Tim Curry devil stands up. A big Satan, like in a movie. Clive goes, fuck you, man. I'm not scared of you. And holds up the cube and he goes, this is where the real power is. You're all sacrifices. He tricked you. He brought you here to sacrifice you, just like they sacrificed me. The big devil goes, kill him. It's every monster in the entire horror pantheon versus Freddy, Jason, and Chucky, and Clive. Except for Clive, this time when it says kill him, he goes, fuck you, I don't die, like that, and presses in the cube. 
Clive's whole arm goes white, like white, white, not Caucasian, like white. And chains go bursting out of his wrist. He's ah! like that. They attack him. And he's getting thrown around by his own arm during this giant fight. It's a Marvel movie. So Samara from the ring, it's Candyman versus Freddy. It's everything you want. It's everything you want in this scene. It's every single thing you would want to happen, I would do. Everything. Just over-deliver out the ass until finally Clive is able to control the chains in his arm and fucking starts wiping out half of the fucking slashers. Now keep in mind, being killed doesn't kill you here, but it does like take you out. So he is taking fools out. We are seeing like fucking, you know, pumpkin head gets torn in half. It's fucking sick. Clive eventually kills the devil only for the devil to go. I suppose it could only last so long. Hell comes crashing down around them into geometric shapes and a maze that goes on forever. It's Pinhead from Hellraiser. This hell was just a comforting illusion, something to show you all, something you'd know before you arrived. The only lost souls, the only truly lost souls, were brought to me by divine providence. Hey, that's true. Chucky kept getting thrown out of the deeper layer of hell. Jason is trapped in the lake until he respawns, and Freddy was trapped in the dreamscape. None of them would have ever been to hell. That means Clive and this whole journey has played directly into the hands of a monster so much more dangerous than the devil. The lament configuration. Extremity of experience embodied in living creatures, the Cenobites, not quite dead, not quite alive, but ever in pain and forever in pleasure. Clive Barker's Hellraiser are the antagonists of this movie. Up with the call, guess what? Liv manages to drop Michael Myers down an elevator shaft. Wouldn't you know, we lose one of our kids, we kill one of the cult members, but now his body is starting to flatline. Our dude, Clive, is about to be torn apart. You know, the classic thing where all of the chains get you. Except for as he's being torn apart, Pinhead says, and you were sent here as the sacrifice. And Clive realizes, no, I wasn't. I wasn't sent here. The old guard said, you can't send someone to hell. I arrived here on my own. I was brought here after they poisoned me. I went into the dreamscape. Then I went into the Bardo. Then I went into the factory that was made for Chucky at the gates of hell. And then I went into hell. I wasn't sent here as a sacrifice. You were sent here as a sacrifice. I'm the one with the cube. And Pinhead goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> Whoops. Clive tears Pinhead apart. But all of the Cenobites now converge on them as hell falls apart. All of the other slasher killers fall into darkness. Freddy, Jason, and Chucky are dangling on each other, holding on as hell descends into geometric shapes. It's like a final level in a video game. Chains flying everywhere. Pinhead is not going down that easy. In the fucking, in the fucking hospital, there's... Michael Myers is like chasing Liv, chasing Liv. The, the Smiths are chasing Liv. It's getting more and more intense. Drama, action, drama. Clive realizes, he grabs, he grabs Pinhead, he's all fucked up. But now Clive, as he grabs Pinhead, all the pins go onto Clive's face. And we realize, hey, we finally have a modern, iconic black slasher killer. Thank you, let's get in on it. It's Pinhead, and he's black, and he's an anti-hero. I'm turning it. It's all backwards now, even though he looks white. It's cool. Uh, so Pinhead's like, fuck. Clive opens him. They need a portal to, from the dead world to the living world. The cult has been trying to summon demons. Out of it comes Clive, pissed off, 
chain through cultists, left, right, left, right, left, right. Michael Myers turns around, stabs Clive, starts to drive him back into the portal into hell. Surprise, bitch, it's Jason. Jason versus Michael. You've been waiting for it. You've got it. Guess what? It's not a fight. Bam, 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 bam. Super brutal hits. And then Michael gets Jason and goes to slit his throat. His hand is caught. By Freddy, who's halfway out of the hell portal, stabs Jason in the chest, or stabs Michael in the chest. Michael turns and stabs Freddy in the chest. Freddy falls down out of the hell portal. Clive grabs Freddy and picks him up, chains at Michael Myers. Michael Myers is like, whoa, totally overwhelmed. Backwards, backwards. Freddy is trying to get Jason before Jason gets dragged with Michael Myers back into the hell portal. Chucky jumps up onto Michael Myers' back as Michael Myers grabs the real body of, you know, there's still the body of, there's Cenobite Clive and normal Clive. As Michael Myers grabs the body, as he's pulled back into hell, Chucky jumps on him from behind and rips Michael Myers' mask halfway off so we full on see his face. And Chucky stabs a knife into the side of his head. And, and Michael Myers, of course, is Michael Myers, so he just goes and grabs Chucky by the throat. And my and, and Chucky goes, kid, you deserve this. I don't come back for me. Pulls Michael. They fall into hell. The gateway closes. The cultists are now alone with Freddy, who's on the floor with a stab wound. Freddy's mortal right now. Jason Voorhees and Clive, a Cenobite. Liv is like looking at Clive's body, looking at the demon, looking at Clive's body, looking at the demon. Clive looks at Mr. and Mrs. Smith. He goes, was this what you wanted? Because this is how it worked out. Mr. Smith goes, please, we're nice people. Freddy, boom, through the back, not through the brain, through the mouth, claws. And then he pulls them up through the guy's head, watermelon. Miss Smith goes, He made me do everything. I, I didn't do any of Jason, boom, head off. <laughs> Two other cultists turn to try to run. Liv shoots one of them, and one of them gets a chain through the spine. I don't want info on your company. People, people weird as fuck. Okay, so... <laughs> Clive realizes he needs to go back into his body. So he goes back into his body, but he keeps the cube. The police breach the hospital. Jason leaves, basically escapes. It has a moment where he escapes into the sewer, but Freddy looks like a normal guy and doesn't have the burns, but he has a stab wound from the same type of knife as everyone else in the hospital. So Freddy is basically taken by Jason out into the world for the sequel. Oh, none of this is permanent. I'm not going to leave Freddy as a normal guy. Like... So the end of the movie is basically our boy gets adopted by the cute family. But then, of course, Liv has broken out to go visit him. And they go. And he's like, I'm glad you're here. She's like, why? And he's like, because you know I got to go back. She's like, what? And he's like. I got to go back for Chucky. And Freddy comes out of the woods and now he looks cool as shit because it's just the actor we have who plays Freddy, but he has the hat, but he just looks great. You know, just like he's recovered from the stab wound. And then Jason comes out of the woods and Jason now has like, I don't know. Well, hey, that's a hoodie. I don't, I don't know. Jason comes out of the woods and, you know, he's like, she's like, you're going to go back to hell? And Clive goes, I know this may shock you, but I'm not a good person. And I don't think you are either. He holds out the cube to live. He goes, come to hell with me. Make a deal with the devil. She takes the cube and she starts to turn white. Movie's done. So the sequel is, of course, getting Chucky out of hell and visiting 80s action villains in hell and all sorts of other cool things. Hannibal Lecter is in that one. And then the third one is Hell on Earth is 
uh, basically all of the modern, it would be whatever we could get the rights to, whatever big bad from a modern movie, although there aren't any real good ones that we could get the rights to. So that's my pitch for Hellbound. I'm proud of it. I think it's good. It wasn't fanfic. I almost sold that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy that I almost got that to exist? Just like, yeah, the perfect way to close out the 80s boom. That was exactly what I wanted to do. And it, when I first started pitching, it was 2016. And I wanted to do retro is big in right now. I want to murder it. I want to do retro modern. I want to do the 80s movies as Pirates of the Caribbean. I want to do the slasher movies as Pirates of the Caribbean in hell are rated. And it just, it didn't feel like in 2016, it really felt like a can't miss thing, you know? Um, where's Ash? He has his own mythology. I don't want to include all that comic book stuff. Oh, I forgot. I forgot an important thing, which is that Chucky, when he first has the opportunity to leave hell, he says he can't leave hell because they keep catching him. But then we find out the reason he won't leave hell is because of Tiffany. It's because he's staying because he needs to get Tiffany out and he's in love with her. And that's sort of how he gets back in good with the group. He's hiding that. And then Clyde figures it out because he sees that Tiffany is being held hostage by the big demon. And Ch Chucky, what, the big fake Satan, Tiffany's being held hostage by him. And Chucky says, Clive goes, why don't you do something about that? Be a man. Chucky goes, I'm a doll. You said it yourself. If I went up there, they would just kill me. And I get sent back. He can't hurt her. She'll suffer and suffer. I already killed her. Like that. And you're like, well, I can't really argue with that reasoning. Wow, they have a very toxic relationship. But he's not wrong. I mean, she's, it's not like Tiffany's cool. You know, it's not like Tiffany's an okay person. So like, they kind of deserve each other. The Toy Story video is going to be September. It's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be way more high tech than this. Um, all the stuff uh, about like the movie industry, industry and shit. All that is in my cats video where um, I watch the movie Cats in a unique way. Yeah, I have like videos coming that are shot on like really high def cameras and like have professional production. I also have a Jurassic World video that looks like I shot it on my grandmother's flip phone. And it's basically just me yelling about how much I love Jurassic World 2. Yeah, I was in an office pitching that. People loved it, but I couldn't get the rights to Freddy. Golden Demon Max Best is the Max Best is the whatever that says. Yeah, you know what? I'm happy with this Max now. Uh, this is the most happy I've been with the guy, if I'm being dead ass. You know, you live and you learn. I've been through a lot of different permutations. Patrick, why do you keep saying shocker? What do you mean? Are you talking about Herman? Wait, wait, I wonder why that guy Patrick keeps saying shocker. Are you talking about shocker legit or Wes Craven shocker? You know, there's a different thing associated with me. Superman agent of Batman is coming and it's, it's fun guys. We shot it literally today. It's fun, man. We talking Herman Jones? Uh, yeah, everything you want to know about the world of American Alien will be in my Superman Agent of Batman video. Um, hey, uh, could you buy my play on Amazon? It's called Polybius. 
Um, it's good. If you like my writing and you like my YouTube, I would appreciate it. And I think you'll enjoy it. It's very intense. It's uh, really intense. But you might like it. Okay. I am going to go visit someone at their house. Pay a little attention to a hairless cat who I love very deeply and who you can see on my Instagram up to my knees, 1985. Okay, bye guys. I'll delete this soon. Oh, I might pitch the pilot of Dirk Gently season three just for fun, but I don't want to like bother anyone. So I'm hesitant on it.